very good evening and a warm welcome to all our viewers to an enriching knowledge series on facade and fenestration. Facade and Beyond presented by Timex Bond ACP HCL, Architectural Ideas Personified. Welcome on board for an interactive discussion on functional facade. What are the challenges faced with complex geometries? What is the significance of the aesthetic feature of facades? What are thematic facade designs and a variety of recurring elements? Let us gain more insights from our eminent panel with rich experience from the build and design industry. Joining us today for this perceptive session are Architect Kunal Kuadekar, Director, Nareen Kuadekar and Associates, who is also our moderator for today's session. Architect Apurva Sharma, Associate Architect, Architect Hafiz Contractor. Architect Saurabh Chatterjee, Principal Architect, Skyline Architects. Architect Rishikesh Hadnurkan, Principal Architect, Architect Rishikesh H. Mr. Ritesh Jindal, Senior Facade Consultant, Arup Consultants. Mr. Janesh Gala, Director, Timex Bond. I hope we have an informative and a knowledgeable discussion. Before we start the panel discussion, we would like to play a short AV and thereafter, Architect Kunal Kuadekar will be taking the lead. Thank you. Hello, welcome to IDAC uh, Facade and Beyond Functional Facade uh, discussion. Uh, I'm quickly, quickly going to run you by the uh, entire uh, group of panelists here. We've been joined by architect uh, Apurva Sharma from uh, Architect Hafiz Contractor. We've been uh, joined by uh, Mr. Ritesh Jindal, Facade Consultant from Arab Consultants. We've been joined by architect Saurabh Chatterjee, principal architect of Skyline uh, Architects. We've been uh, uh, joined by Mr. Janesh Gala, director of Timex Fund, and uh, Rushikesh uh, Had, uh, Hadnur, Hadnurkar from architect Rish, Rishikesh H. Guys, hello. Sorry about that little bit of a time lapse there on my pronunciation. Hello. Hi. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, briefly uh, or sort of uh, uh, in a nutshell expand on uh, uh, each of the panelists and then we can start with the uh, individual uh, um, you know presentations about the architects and then we move on so on and so forth. So I'd like to start with uh, architect Apurva Sharma. Uh, Apurva Sharma as you know did her BR from the School of Architecture IPS Academy uh, indoor and a master's in urban and regional planning. She joined architect Hafiz contractor in 2004 as a trainee and she continues to the day and uh, her expertise includes several flagship and institutional projects with several master planning and residential projects uh, including some of the uh, including the Infosys camp, uh, campus at Mysore, uh, Mangalore, Pune, Calcutta, uh, the modernization uh, of uh, all of the three Bits Pilani campuses, Manipal University, Jaipur, and Bangalore. Uh, she's worked uh, on uh, AeroCity, DLF IT Park, and various other projects for the Loda Group, uh, Godrej Properties, Vada Group, etc. 
uh, Apurva, I'd like you to take over and uh, give us a presentation and uh, um, I hand over to you now. Good evening. So the topic for today's uh, discussion is facades. And facade is something uh, which not just we as architects, but uh, even common man relates to. So whenever you talk about a building, uh, yes, functionality does matter, but ultimately what kind of remains in a person's uh, memory uh, for a particular place or a building is the facade of that particular building. There are many governing factors uh, while designing a facade. So, uh, there, uh, so it's sustainability, is the performance, ultimately it's the envelope uh, of the building that we are uh, designing, right? So the performance has to be met, maintainability of the facade, because uh, the building that we build are for years to come and maintainability is one such important factor which every single client, be it government, be it private developers, be it corporates, everyone is worried about. The new trend in the facade design is the biophilia on the facade, facade which is uh, uh, one of our favorites uh, currently. Focus on technology because uh, until and unless you crack the technology and you know what you're designing uh, is technically sound does not make sense. So just a pretty looking uh, building uh, or a facade is not the solution. Uh, the usability of the right materials, uh, especially when we are talking about sustainability, we are all looking at reducing the carbon footprint. We are looking at uh, being a, a, a net zero uh, campus or a building for many, many projects. So there again, the material uh, uh, is of uh, utmost importance. And uh, last but not the least, the aesthetic value, you know, uh, which, you know, most of the times you finalize the plans with the clients, but uh, it's the facade or the elevation which just keeps going on and on and on. People, clients want to see the options uh, and uh, we are always uh, preparing, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure all, all you architects are also doing the same. Uh, coming to the next step is selection of materials. So, uh, uh, so what's really uh, interesting is that uh, our fraternity is moving to new and new materials day by day. So be it glass, which has got full variety now with, uh, you know, different properties, uh, different shades, different, uh, you know, so, so they like, you can like actually do a thesis on the glasses available. Uh, concrete, the most under uh, kind of, I would say, uh, valued uh, element, the exposed concrete, which is again trending now, along with cotton steel, they both form a, a beautiful uh, uh, you know pair together uh, cladding in uh, in terms of uh, be it fire rated acp zinc aluminium when the budget uh, permits you uh, again a very very uh, underrated item is terracotta uh, wherein uh, uh, it's it's most beautiful and i think we we don't value it as much uh, and we we should be using it much more and uh, 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 digital screens or smart screens as building facades. So uh, I think they've got great potential. It's just the uh, current budgets uh, and the pricing of the same uh, at times doesn't work for many, many projects, but I know a, a lot of clients who would want to kind of, uh, uh, you know, use this and ultimately uh, is the, uh, most uh, undervalued paint uh, but but there are many many options that we could uh, really work on with those and uh, last but not the least whenever the dead facades are there we could use form liners and we've we've done buildings wherein uh, we've created most beautiful facades out of uh, these dead walls using form liners you know with the effect of light and uh, and even like not just lighting per se but uh, using daylight coming to the next next aspect uh, is designing facade with a reason yeah so it's not just about creating glass facade buildings uh, pretty looking buildings but to kind of really study and analyze what is the kind of thermal buffering the facade is providing and the kind of light that's entering the workplace 
is it really uh, adding value to the workplace inside or is it creating glare so uh, facade is just not about the skin it's what it does to the overall space within um this is one of the sample projects i wanted to share wherein uh, uh, we've uh, uh, designed this academic building uh, uh, in a vicinity of a lake and uh, uh, being a hot and humid climate we wanted the corridors etc to be well ventilated and the facade comes right on the uh, uh, the structural steel of the facade forms the main uh, core of the uh, uh, building you know so the braces that you see here uh, are actually the structural steels it, they can be no no like there can't be a more honest building than this wherein the structure of the uh, building is actually forming a part of the facade and we are having a gkd mesh out here uh, which allows the breeze to get in it allows the lights to, uh, light to get into the uh, classrooms at the same time avoiding the glare so this is a kind of uh, uh, planning that is required to be done rather than just planning uh, uh, you know a glass facade per se uh this is another uh, example i'd like to share wherein uh, we've uh, done an analysis of the four directions of the office space and depending upon the uh, uh, upon what is the kind of shading that's required on each of the different facades which is north south east west the fins and the screens be it horizontal or the vertical uh, uh, shading devices have been planned so that kind of creates the drama in the facade at the same time it's an informed design having a reason the way it's planned so so this is the kind of facade design we are talking about this is another uh, project which is uh, uh, you know uh, completed in jaipur this re received a griha five star rating and uh, uh, it's also uh, uh, received the lead platinum rating now here if you see at the bottom of the screen we have shown how the facade for again each direction uh, varies the chhaja projection the jali height to let in the uh, entire uh, light come into the classroom space so it's an academic building and uh, uh, even the jali is planned to optimize the shading and daylighting this is another project uh, we've uh, this i've tried to include a different type of project which is an which is a retrofit now this is an existing building which the client wanted to kind of we only done this 20 years ago and the client wanted to refurbish it being an existing building the structure being uh, a little weak uh, we had to kind of uh, plan this uh, cladding in a way that it meets the code as well as it doesn't become too heavy for the old structure to take care of yeah so being in mumbai it had to have aluminum framing it had to have the proper uh, sandwich travertine stones so we used uh, honeycomb panels to reduce the weight of the uh, to reduce the weight of the uh, 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 the stone so that the uh, so that it doesn't put too much of load uh above is uh, above are the images which are showing the fritting and the sampling that is done and etc this is another project wherein uh, uh, like we were talking about uh, it's just simple paint bottom two floors where you can really touch and feel is dry cladding in jodhpur stone a uh, little bit of metal ms railing hpl cladding and and it gives a beautiful uh, uh, look to the building yeah so unlike the tall buildings this being a shorter structure this did not involve uh, too much of calculations of the wind loads and uh, stuff like that but uh, uh, it's important that each uh, facade element that's planned is uh, is technically tested in terms of stability and in terms of uh, uh, in terms of detailing this is another project in delhi the on the left top you see is the rendered image and on the right top you see is uh, what's been uh, uh, actually executed at site it's still under construction uh, again this is entire jodhpur cladding and uh, uh, there are these all these cornices that you see 
are uh, in concrete. We did not uh, want to use GRC or have those kind of details wherein, you know, the GRC meets and the GRC cracks and, you know, the joints. So we, we actually made the contractor to cast the uh, cornices also in concrete. Um, uh, that's it for now. Thank you. Purva, thank you. That was really nice, concise uh, uh, presentation. Um, uh, I'll what I'll do now is I'll move on to uh, Ritesh Jindal. Okay, I'll just give you a little bit of background about Ritesh. Ritesh actually started his career with uh, Arab in Singapore after complete his uh, completing his uh, bachelor's in architecture from uh, IIT Kharagpur. Uh, he has now come back to Bom Mumbai and he's rejoined uh, Arab's Mumbai office as a senior consultant and leading, he leads the facades team here. And he brings a unique uh, perspective to projects with his, uh, you know, his computation design approach, uh, his proficiency in uh, visual scripting, BIM platform, and he deals a lot with uh, climate change and the climate change related matters, you know. Um, He's worked on several projects in uh, Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia with a lot of clients. So um, I, would, I would like him to uh, take over and uh, run us through his presentation. And uh, uh, Ritesh, I hand over to you now. Uh, thank you, Kunal, for the, uh, for the nice intro. And uh, thank you, Apurva, for the very wide presentation on facade showing different materials and how we can play around with the colors, with its whole purpose of being functional facade. Now, uh, I wanted to take this opportunity in this presentation to talk about two big things. One is what are all the drivers that actually helps uh, from engineering point of view, how do we design facades? And the second thing is about resolving complex geometries. Since technology has advanced so much and uh, architects like you have been doing some creative work on the facade, <laughs> it's been challenging for us to, you know, kind of come up with uh, a solution, an engineering solution to actually fix it. So uh, here are a few of uh, the design drivers that help us. For example, facade becomes your first layer that separates your internal from the external. The first ever thing that facade does is provides that, that complete enclosure which gives you safety, which gives you um, separation from the outside air, water, the heat coming in, the light, the sound. View, obviously, from inside and outside both because aesthetic is something that people relate to really well. Whenever they go, they see a building, they just remember that, that first image when they see that building. Uh, fire is another one. Pollution, yes. I mean, uh, living in, in a city like Mumbai, it just become very important to separate ourselves from the external environment to the internal environment and security and explosions. So apart from just aesthetic, I think it's important for all of us to understand that uh, facade as a whole is, is doing a lot, much more stuff. Um, uh, I'll give you another example of sound. I mean, living in Mumbai itself, so much of traffic, so much of honking and how do we avoid this honking? For example, for especially buildings or residential that are right next to the main streets. That, that becomes another challenge. So that's also part of facade that, that helps you separate these two environments. Now the next, now these are drivers and constraints that, uh, that are completely off the purpose of facade, but they also help us um, to achieve uh, what, what the actual intent is. For example, client's budget, what is the available funds? What is the time requirement? If we have to complete a project within a certain time, are we, do we have enough lead time? Do we have enough program? Do we have enough material that we can ship or that we can get in India itself? That becomes a lot, lot other stuff. Uh, regulations, obviously we have code standards that we need to comply. Authorities, we need approvals, we need procedures, we need some testings to be done. Do we have the right skill set available uh, locally in order to do some kind of high tech facades? So uh, there are a lot of kinetic facades that are happening uh, across the globe now, but do we have the right skill that we can implement them in India? We definitely do. And I think we need to remove this conception that it only happens in um, uh, other countries. It does happen in India and it's done beautifully. Ease of construction, yes. Once the fabrication is done, we need that speed. We need all the access equipments on site. So, you know, the facade just comes from the factory, just hook on, move on up quickly, fast, 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 and then you're done. Durability, 
most important thing. When we talk about design life of any facade taking about 25 years, we need to also think about whether it's durable, it's gonna stay for long, what are the different materials? How can this survive in a particular environment? Uh, India being uh, in, in a very uh, uh, good environment, I would say, but there are extreme environments that we have also dealt with. For example, uh, in, in, in Canada, where you have extreme temperatures that goes from minus to plus. So there also, uh, there's a complete different aspect to the durability of the facade. Quality control, very important when it comes to materials that come. Uh, ecological impact, I think, uh, pretty much uh, Apurva had covered about the ecological impact and everything, so I'll skip that part. Structural requirement is the next big thing. So we as consultants, when, when any project comes to us, it's, it's, um, it's about making the vision of the architect possible. And there are lots and lots of uh, engineering behind required. For example, what is a load part? Because facade doesn't take its own load. It generally just takes uh, the, the dead load, transfer it to the main structure and the structure takes, takes the, uh, the main structure takes all the load from the facade. Uh, apart from that, you have uh, your other effects like temperature, temperature differences, because there are different materials. How are those different movements taken care of? The slab deflects, there's, there's horizontal movement. So I have just two small clips here to show for example, how does a horizontal uh, mullion takes all the different uh, tolerances between um, when, when any time there's, there's a difference that happens in the, in the uh, slabs. And this one here, it's the vertical moment. So whenever you have a slab that's deflecting due to dead load, due to its own weight, uh, that's where all the load has been taken from. So that's a stack joint of, of uh, curtain wall systems. So a lot more uh, things are happening in the background to make a facade, a complete functional facade that is engineering, uh, that is sound uh, engineering wise. And then it goes on to site, taking all the other factors, installation, be it fabrication, be it your lead time, and then all your access equipments as well. So you also need to clean facade. So you also need accesses to actually go install them. And then later you should have a, a, a kind of a cleaning methodology to uh, cover that up. So uh, that's, uh, I think I've taken uh, a lot more time here, but uh, just talking about facade design uh, hierarchy here, that is the way uh, we as consultants would like to take this whole uh, approach where you have the first important thing is you get the structure right, you get the enclosure right, then you talk about its performance, you talk about its functionality, and then you go to improvise it to the next level where it comes to environmental factors, make it sustainable, use green products, um, take advantage of the daylight, how much daylight is coming in, what are the different materials. Then you go to the aesthetics of it where you still want that beautiful structure outside, you still want that beautiful view from the inside, but yet you have everything, the foundation of that facade is ready and that's how you lead to the holistic design. So, um, uh, the second part of the presentation is about complex geometry. Um, so this is a project uh, at Changi Airport uh, in Singapore. So it's Project Jewel. It's world's largest indoor waterfall. And uh, this was basically my first project. Uh, pretty excited about this project. So I thought, let me share something. How we resolve such a complex geometry where you have huge, you have 90,000 plus glass uh, panels, all different sizes. You can see all the structure, very less columns inside this, and you have all that dynamic load of the water falling down. Now, everything of that is geometry. So how do we do this? We usually take uh, parametric tools to resolve certain kind of geometries because the complexities, um, whenever you want to change a panel, whenever you want to change a definition of that geometry, it's once you have those fixed and variable parameters, it just becomes so much easy. So um, a very friendly tool, uh, Rhino Grasshopper, that's what we use. And there are a lot of interoperability tools that help us do the optimization, do the sustainability aspects, which follows on to go, uh, going into the structural analysis bit where we have GSA, strand seven, calculating the different loads, how will, how will the whole engineering of the facade will stay. And then we go into documentation and visualization uh, has, has also been um, the latest trend where you, you have all these augmented reality, you have HoloLens and you're trying to do a mixed reality uh, stuff. So that's, that's kind of a smart, smart design workflow that we implement uh, internally. So coming back to the, uh, coming back to the project Jewel, um, what we had, uh, we had just drawings from the architect. There was a lot of information here, but 
we only wanted to pick the right information for us to rebuild the whole geometry first. Uh, so we chose uh, all the ellipses, uh, uh, major, minor axis, all the radiuses. And the next part for us was to define those curves that is actually defining that domular structure. And as you can see, there are lot, lots of lots of information here, but uh, it becomes very important. What are your fixed parameters? Now, for instance, this 33.64 can be 33.6395, whatever. Can we take this, this as, an, as, a, as, a, as a geometry definition? Maybe not because fabrication won't allow us to come up with this whole geometry definition. So what we did, we took all as whole numbers. So we took the radius, we took the arc. We know after this arc, once the other arc is changing, there's a tangent towards the radius, which will be perpendicular. We took that tangent. We took the top point, which is P4, um, where your curvature continuity and also your tangential continuity should follow. And then we took the last point where it terminates. And so that, that's the only information we took. And then the whole geometry was, was kind of rebuilt using these uh, parametric definitions. Now, uh, how do we do this analysis? So once we started drawing these curvatures, we kind of analyzed where are these curvatures changing. So if you could see those spikes, you could see that there are, there are certain differences, there are certain manipulations done to achieve this curve in the first place. So we did a small comparison. So what does our curve, which is the red line here, and what is the architect curves actually defining? So we went back to the architect, uh, tell that, okay, can we do the small modifications because it just helps under the whole process of uh, manufacturing, getting the material, getting the right geometry. So we could start defining, we could start defining those different panels. So the architect was, was uh, okay with that small change because it did not affect uh, the whole geometry in the larger aspect and uh, the whole surface was regenerated. So that's, that's the whole uh, uh, kind of uh, history behind uh, developing that surface. Mm -hmm. And the next task for us was to rationalize these panels. Now there are 90 plus thousand panels out here and how do we rationalize them? So, uh, uh, so we first took only the top portion, the top dome, where we had about almost 13,000 panels into that. And then we took uh, the horizontal division. So whenever you're trying to solve a parametric problem, you need to understand what are your fixed parameters and what are your variable parameters? What can you play between these two? So when we talk about these horizontal divisions, we talk about number of panels, we talk about length, we talk about glass panel width. So we analyzed, okay, the glass panel width was about 2.6. Uh, I've uh, this is really nice, but I've got a few questions for you on this in the Q and A round. Sure. Yeah. Into detail um, on this. Um, Lovely. Sure. <laughs> We're happy to happy to answer you. So um, anyway, so taking back to the uh, the different parameters here. So glass panel width, which is 2.6. Now, usually uh, the glass that, that is most uh, readily available is uh, 36602440. So we started thinking, okay, let's, why not we rationalize the glass panel width? Because let's say if a breakage happens tomorrow, how do we achieve this glass? Do, we'll have to uh, order this glass specifically. We'll have that lead time. We'll have that installation separately, everything done. So we started optimizing the glass panel width as our base key. And that's how we were able to achieve uh, 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 kind of a change from the different lens, different panels, different horizontal divisions. And that's how the overall geometry, the overall rationalization was done using just glass panel width as our parameter. Perfect. So um, that's all. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. There was an in-depth presentation. We'll get back to you uh, uh, sure. in detail in a bit. I'd uh, like to uh, take the opportunity to uh, introduce uh, architect Saurabh Chatterjee from Skyline Architects, principal architect Skyline Architects. Saurabh has done his uh, bachelor's in architecture from uh, uh, College of Architecture Lucknow. He has worked as an associate architect with architect Hafiz Contractor and thereafter he's worked on several notable projects including um, a 46 twin, uh, sto twi story twin tower at Dadar uh, Magnum Towers, Nathani Heights, 72-story uh, residential tower in Mumbai Central for uh, Nathani Parik Construction Com Company, Lotus IT Park at Elphinstone, you know, and a several bunch of mixed-use developments. Um, what I'd like to do is, Saurabh, 
uh, I'd like you to take over and uh, give us your uh, presentation so that everyone can see. Thanks. Thank you, Kunal. Hi, everyone. Uh, I would like to uh, talk about some design inspirations given by uh, some master architects. So how they, uh, they, they were inspired to create beautiful facades and the form of the buildings. So in the extreme top left, we can see a bird's nest stadium in Beijing. Now this was basically, uh, the inspiration was from a Chinese pottery with a, cra a crazy design pattern. So that concept was taken to create this kind of a network of uh, uh, steel structures which were um, overlapping each other and the voids were filled with transparent membranes. So uh, then towards the right of that uh, is a, a project by, famous project by Walt, uh, by Frank O'Gary, which is Walt Disney Concert Hall in UK. Now, as we can see from the, uh, from the sketches, uh, the, since it's a design, uh, it's a concert hall, uh, the design was created in such a way that, you know, various forms of flowing, uh, flowing intermixing uh, forms were taken and they were, were, they were joined together to create a form of an orchestra. So by doing this, uh, this gives an impression that when you go to this project or, or, or to this site, you get a feel of entering into a concert hall. Uh, where uh, you can see some dance, dance performances and all. And they were also taken inside with a natural flow from outside. Now top, uh, sorry, bottom left, we can see one uh, uh, project by Con Pedersen, which is a Pedersen uh, automotive museum. Now here, uh, the form of the car, which was curvilinear, was taken into consideration and a facade was created by these kind of uh, 3D um, uh, uh, facade where the surfaces were going in and out, which was giving the feel of a speed as well. Now towards the right of that is the, uh, is the structure, as we can see right in the center of the desert, which is a VR headquarters in UAE. Now it was a structure designed by architect Zaha Adire where uh, the building itself was looking like a sand dune, couple of sand dunes mixing um, with the surrounding landscape and they were creating a central oasis kind of a courtyard, which was helping in getting natural ventilation inside the building and diverting the uh, sunlight to the, uh, to the office spaces. Now the exterior, exterior, exterior surface of this uh, structure was, uh, was a reflective surface with white color. So that was helping in getting the uh, energy conservation inside the building. On top of that is the uh, Louvre's Museum in Abu Dhabi, designed by famous architect John Noble. Now here the entire design has been uh, taken from uh, Arabic cupolas, design geometry, and uh, there are lots of uh, punctures in the entire dome, which is covering the entire museum. So when we see in the daytime with the movement of the sun, you see a lot of stars, you know, twinkling from the down below. So it creates a very nice um, geometry on the, on the inside. It's also called dance of uh, light. Coming to the next slide, uh, towards the top left, we can see the facade. Now this is about the dynamic facades that, uh, that can be created with new technologies, uh, which can be you know, uh, oriented with the solar angles. The panels can move as per the sonar, uh, sonar, sun directions, create kind of a light and shadow inside the building, which is required. On the right side, we have these panels, which again are dynamic nature, which are changing with time uh, as per the requirement. So there can be n number of facades created by these kind of dynamic forms. 
bottom right we see a building which is a proposed building in dubai where the entire floor plate is rotating so at any given time of the of the day you can see a different facade so it itself is a very dynamic facade then uh, through lights in the night we can create these kind of dynamic forms uh, with the the whole facade of the building can become like a screen and a uh, lot of beautiful forms can be created by giving uh, as uh, by giving uh, led lights in a different dynamic or a static manner also they can be used for uh, for displays of uh, hoardings and advertisements now coming to this last slide which is about energy efficiency if we can see a building where the two uh, blocks are connected by bridges and uh, they have windmills so they also in the modern day can be used in the buildings to create uh, uh, solar energy and energy efficiency of the building increases the top right one is uh, a building in uh, melbourne wherein we can see a, a a a panel reflective panel on top of the uh, of the smaller structure where the sunlight gets reflected and as per the requirement of the day the uh, the light can come inside the corridor or the courtyard which is down below which is dark so you can have the sunlight you know uh, reflected in into various directions through these kind of technologies also we can create a uh, number of things like waterfalls from the building high rise building and uh, you know in the center we can see some forms of futuristic buildings which are uh, which are for the future uh, we can uh, have these kind of forms and various geometries by the advancement in the technology we are facing we can see now thank you sort of very nice and concise presentation uh seeing all those images was very nice i was uh, critiqued by zaha hadid in my third year of uh, architecture at the aa wow. super tough audience i happened to spend 3 months with her as well wow. and work under so it was an absolute killer and uh, jean nouvel as well the bibliothèque national in uh, france i ended up spending one week in that building and uh, i had a chance to meet him on two occasions so phenomenal uh, stuff so it just brought a lot of memories back a lucky man <laughs> i was younger then and i was uh, lucky to be uh, uh, at the a so uh, what i'm going to do now is uh, enough talking about me i'm going to go to architect uh, uh, rushikesh hadnurkar okay rushikesh Uh, born in 1971, completed his graduation in architecture in 94. He established Architect Rishikesh H in 2001, and he has grown to uh, have a strong team of 77 plus uh, professionals. And uh, uh, owing to his understanding of the complexities of the profession and challenges, challenges creating innovative designs through his experience and uh, uh, his work with eminent architects such as Architect Raja Idri. his portfolio has covered phenomenal works um he's done some phenomenal uh, residential towers private houses including uh, uh, mr sanjit sachin tendulkar's and uh, mr kv kamath's uh, uh, personal projects as well and uh, what i'd like to do now is uh, rishikesh will you uh, take over and give us your presentation yes good evening to all yeah first of all it was such a mesmerizing presentation from ritesh fantastic apurva saurav it was great fantastic you know i hope i can match at least 25% to what you guys have done okay <laughs> let me just you know share my screen again i think yeah. see let me start with you know a few thoughts what a common man thinks like you know i'll give a general thought about the whole thing like you know if the architect is more famous he gets the fame only by the facade the architect is known like right now you seen saurav's presentation correct like he mentioned about two architects yeah very famous which no you know one is zahadi 
and the another one is uh, like you know uh, I forgot the name uh, Gene Gene Dill. Yeah. Then the two architects, what are there? They are known by every human being, like you know, who are little bit related to architecture. That's what I think so. Like you know, any building is made famous not by the architect, by his work, by the elevation, what he does, by the facade. Like you talk of Taj Mahal, you talk of any building like Kanchanjunga also. That is there at that time, 20 years down the line, we used to go all the way to see the building. We don't know what's there inside. We don't know what is there in the plan. We don't know what is there in the you know user. But we heard, wow, what a building, Charles Korea. Like that, like VT Victoria Terminus building is there. Nobody, common man doesn't understand the plan. Nobody understands the function. The, the way still it mesmerizes after 100 years also. That's what facade does. That's what you know brings common man. They get wow, what a building. People are known architects become famous overnight by facade. That's what I give a lot of credit to our eminent architect Hafiz contractor also for being famous for facade. We we salute his work and love his work. And then we have got you know a lot of work what we have done. Right. The first one what I'll show is this is the project what we have done recently in Surat. What you see here is the view. This is the presentation what we gave to the client. He wanted a project that like the facade talks. He was ready to spend four times the value what anybody does. So we gave this kind of parametric facade. It has got five, you know, it has got five layers of it. This is the view what we did. This is the reality. This is the reality. I know what it takes to make this because, you know, once we presented this, we had no idea about what will be the cost of this. You got it. Then we got this hexagonal thing from Euromax. And then we had five layers of it. First is the MS, MS structure. Then you have got a aluminium layer. Then you have got one another section about it. Then you have got a polythene sheet on top of it. Then you have got this hexagonal sheets to hold it. You have got this entrance that again what we made, you know, in this shape, just to create the wow factor when a person enters. The cost of all this and the glass, it is curved and also slant. So we have to make firma of each glass. So this has costed a bomb to the client, but I can assure you that because of this, his rate per square feet has increased to 500 to 1000 rupees, you know, per square foot. That has given him the additional value what we created for the facade. I think what a common man does is that any building, let it be, you know, this Montessa, what we have created right now, this is what is happening. These are all private builders just to convince them to make this kind of building and to take out money from them for the facade itself is a very big thing. This is not a regular building where you are making a one. No, this needs a lot of working from multiple agencies, facade consultants, contractors, the executors, then you have got clients people. It leaves a lot of energy and a lot of passion. There's a lot of blood that goes into the architect's work, which I hope that, you know, client recognizes after a few years when he earns the money. That is what is what is my request to the young, you know, entrepreneurs, architects who are there, who are putting their blood and soul into their profession. But we have to get the due of the credit that you know what we do for the facades facades bring value not only to the you know building but also generates huge amount of money also personally i think so like you know there are many buildings in singapore that are there the people go all the way spend money to look at the building they give dollars to look at the building they enter into the building to you know, just get the feel of it. Wow, what a what a experience.
that is what I think is facade all about. See, this is again a building where again, we, this is an IT campus of something around 15 lakh square feet. This is a building. This is, you know, at Kochi, where we created terraces at each level. There's a glass terrace. There's a glass terrace. There. This, we have done this facade just for the IT people to come out, go have a view of the lake, have a view of the, you know, atmosphere all around there. To, this was a competition project again. And then we tried to bring in the best of the material in terms of the ACP. See, here I avoided ACP. I wanted to bring in Korean. I wanted to bring in new materials. I always like to, you know, use new material. Aeromax, what I brought in at that time, it was I saw in an exhibition in Bau. And somehow I tried to convince my client I all the way took him to few of the projects in Germany, showed him this project. Then I could, you know, bring in. This is what, you know, we need to bring in in India. That is what I think. So it's the client here are ready to spend money, but there's a lot of energy that goes into that to convince them and to get the work done, to get, to get a good contractors. It's a hell of work. It's a hell of work. Trust me. And then again, this another building, another IT project, what we are doing. Here, I have used two towers. There's a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of presentation has gone into, you know, putting why this, why that, and all that. But I've come straight to the point where, you know, Saurabh has said that, why don't we use waterfall and all that? See, this is a car park. These are two buildings, and just behind this is the car park. So I've used this car park as a place where people come, people, you know, stand here and use this as a big waterfall and the green, the vertical green, where something around 6,000 people in this whole, uh, you know, campus will come sit here outside, use this facade as an entertaining thing to, you know, all sit, gossip there, enjoy their life. That is what is going to be the future right now. You know, make the facades more interactive bring the energy what is needed like you know creating see to to make this waterfall here this is going to cost a lot of things like you know typical what we do for a mlcp this is a mlcp multi-level car park the facade we have tried to bring in like this bring water out of this and to convince client and all these projects what i'm showing you are done they are executed 65 percent 50 percent of it the first project what I showed you, Ornet, is done. It takes a lot of costing that we bring in to the client in this. This is going to be where what Ritesh showed that, you know, the way the Singapore airport is there. I'm sure that that kind of things we can do in India, definitely. And these are again few of the projects that Omkar Summit and all that where we try to, you know, bring in balconies and all that. That will be the future now. We need to bring in balconies out. The kind of, you know, COVID has given right now. We need that free space outside. We need to move out. We need to put the government into pressure to give the balconies free again as an architect forum. That we need to do. Right? Again, here for the, you know, this is again a lake, uh, Lakeview kind of project, residential one, where the balconies have tried to, you know, have tried to take it out almost two, two and a half meter cantilever out. And for a project of 5,000, 6,000 square foot each flat, this gives value to the project also, also, also to the flat owner. He would like to be outside, outside of this, you know, typical flat, which Bombay doesn't have. This is what in the facades we like to, you know, bring in again. We need to change the whole way, the whole architecture is happening all around Bombay because of the COVID. And we can do that as a whole architect forum. We need to bring in a lot of things external. We need to move out of the facade and bring elements that are there fresh, totally fresh. These are again few of the parametric facades and all what we are doing right now. Again, this is the mall where, where I tried to bring in the roof, protrude out the roof. 
this is a fabric room and then try to you know make the entrances more interesting bringing the facade nothing else and again uh, entertainment thing where i tried to put in light energy you know uh, put a screen there moving screen and all overall this is what is my you know a small humble work thank you thank you rishikesh uh, very nicely put together and very well spoken i can feel some of uh, the pain that comes out in trying to explain explain to clients and contractors how to get the job done uh, you know? i think that's what you know apurva will agree with me correct yeah. Yeah, and right. also saurabh yeah i know what i'm going to do really quickly now is also introduce uh, mr jinesh gala uh, who is a director uh, of uh, timex uh, uh, bond industries he's been in business since the last 8 years and he is taking uh, the overall timex groups 35 years uh, legacy ahead uh, you know he's made his company a national brand and he's got offices warehouses in all parts of india um, and uh, he's really been pushing to make timex uh, you know one of the best brands for facade uh, uh, so i'll let him do a brief presentation and then we can go on to our q and a round uh, Mr. Jinesh, over to you. Thank you, Kunal sir, uh, for the kind words. And to be, uh, to start with, it's an honor to be on this panel among such great personalities. You know, I went through all the presentations, and uh, I realized there's so much of experience that you all you know have, and there's so much to learn from you all. So thank you so much for your presentations, and it's been a great learning session for me as well. uh like we spoke about the designs and all the you know complex geometry and so many interesting topics i would like to talk about the product aspect of the facade uh, in timex group we manufacture two of the main uh, highly used facade products in india which is acp and hpl in terms of quantity so i would like to discuss more on that you know in our we have been manufacturing acp since 15 years now and in this 15 years of journey uh, we have realized that the facade industry or the facade uh, designs in india have upgraded and you know the designs have, have become so good and i feel acp had has played a good role in terms of you know the initial push and the change of designs and now we have also launched hpl uh, since uh, you know we've been doing hpl since 5 years now and hpl has also been doing great in indian market i would like to speak about the functionalities and the properties of these product uh, sorry this products today like you can see uh, i've shown some advantages of acp these advantages are directly related to the entire facade system uh, like you can see they are lightweight they are corrosion resistance you know uh, bare minimum maintenance that is required can withstand extreme weather and so what i believe is that being a manufacturer or a manufacturer of a facade product all these problems that we spoke about or all these challenges that we spoke about me as a, as a manufacturer should deliver that those kind of products which solve the solves the problems so i would like to now discuss in detail about these functionalities like the uh, features that i had mentioned first among them is temperature resistance acp can withstand a temperature from minus 50 to 80 degrees so basically it can cover almost every part of india uh, since we are a national brand we do projects in kashmir also we supply acps over there as well so there are there you know i have seen my projects being done and acp being used in areas like pelgam gulmarg and areas which are which have heavy snow so and the on our acps have been doing and performing well and also we supply to states and cities where in summer the temperature rise till you no know, uh, 45 48 degrees which is really high and and our products are being able to withstand those temperatures so the temperature resistance is really important for any facade product is what i believe second is weight the weight of acp is 7.5 kg per square meter and i have taken the fire resistant acp which is now compulsorily used for every project 
so 7.5 kg is a very lightweight material i would say not uh, and i believe that the product being light the system that we used to support it in the facade will also be lighter comparatively so that is how i feel acp is doing well then impact resistance is about 50 kg per uh, centimeter and impact resistance is required for any product uh, when used in exterior corrosion resistant again one very important uh, feature is because of the rains if we talk about exterior it's not only about the temperature or the sunlight it's also about rains product need need you uh, know they need to withstand rains and avoid any you know growth of fungus or any other uh, reactions because of the rains then there is sound insulation by you know around 25 decibels uh, being you know india has <laughs> it's really important that any facade product can you know cut down on sound so that the interior of the entire building you know people working inside or living inside you know uh, have a better environment than the sound decibels which are there outside and in india there are so many festivals and so many uh, days where the decibels go so high so you know ac products like acp can you know help over there i would like to talk about thermal conductivity also and i have given a comparison between few products uh, thermal conductivity is basically the rate at which the heat will transfer from exterior to interior and for acp it is just 0.5 uh, watt and for aluminum if you use solid aluminum it is 210 which is very high uh, stainless steel is 17 concrete is 1.62 and glass is 1 so again acp uh, is doing great in that and i believe thermal conductivity uh, is an important uh, aspect again because the lesser the heat being transferred inside less energy the building will uh, utilize to cool it down so it's an important aspect and i believe that the facade product should have good thermal conductivity as well one most important aspect in today's time is fire resistance acp and hpl both we have we manufacture both these products with class b and class a2 fire rating you know fire not only uh, is important uh, because you know there are so many instances now that we have realized that facade need to be fire resistant and we here we are not only talking about spread of flame the classes that i have mentioned here that is class b and a2 not only mention about the spread of flame the rate at which the fire spreads through our product but also the smoke generation what we have seen is in case of fire people die because of smoke first because of uh, the smoke and not and they die after uh, and the fire comes next so smoke is also a very important aspect where the product needs to generate less smoke so both our products generates very less smoke and we have tested both our products in exova warrington and tua singapore which is both both of them are very renowned laboratories for fire testing in today's time you know this is another great uh, debate or an issue that everyone is talking about as you can see from this article uh, the uh, headline itself uh, explains it that experts call for a ban on glass skies scrapers to save energy in climate crisis so you know this is where uh, products like acp hpl or any other facade product comes into picture uh, you know to avoid greenhouse effect and uh, you know stop or avoid carbon emission or you no know, yeah. if you are using a standard glass facade you need a lot of energy to cool them down and using a lot of energy equates to a lot of carbon emission so as a facade manufacturer as a facade product manufacturer uh, i would like to also focus on this that no products like ac hpl and other facade products help to lower the carbon emission and makes uh, the entire building energy efficient because buildings high rise buildings are you there's so many people inside and to cool it down requires a lot of energy and you know all this you know all these steps will help us to you know keep our climate change in uh, contact i've spoken about the functionalities of our products and facade products in general 
and i would also like to showcase some design aspect as well because that is one very important uh, key in the entire architecture is the look of the design is what every one of you all also mentioned now you know we have recently launched some designs like you know this is our natural stone series in acp if you will see the real uh, sample and you touch it you will you know feel the rustic finish on the top and you will see the entire uh, uh, sheet as a good uh, stone finish and you can use them and again all the functionalities that i discussed before are again applicable for these shades also we have recently launched natural wooden series also here you can see uh, some grains on the top of the uh, finish and when you see the real uh, sample and you touch them you will actually feel it's a, you know it, it will give you a feel of real wood because the entire aluminum is been embossed and the entire feel will be uh, like natural wooden so you can use these acps in interiors also along with exteriors so yes this is uh, my presentation regarding the functional facade and and the functionality of the products that we manufacture and so yes thank you uh, thank you for that jinesh uh, uh, informative um what i've done is i've put together a series of uh, questions about 10 of them and i'd like to dedicate a couple of questions to each one of the panelists and if you could keep the answers you know concise to let's say a minute and a half or two minutes each and we could run through this so should i go ahead and start just give me a thumbs up yes okay so my first question is to uh, architect saurabh chatterjee saurabh as an architect what is the significance of the aesthetic feature of facades and what are the creative ways in which architects are designing facades today if you could share your thoughts for a few minutes so as we saw in the earlier presentations uh, aesthetics plays a very important role and uh, that is the actually the first impression that is created between uh, a, a, a viewer and the structure or a object or whatever so a nicely aesthetical building could be a landmark for that area or an badly designed building could be a eyesore for centuries so i think it's very important that the building is designed uh, functionally as well as aesthetically so it's very important now considering the uh, modern uh, architecture these days as uh, i'm talking about the urban centers where we can see that uh, in urban centers there is scarcity of landscape uh, scarcity of gardens so now uh, and amenities so now we can see the facades of the building and the buildings getting created in such a way that you know the gardens are going on the facade so the entire facade of the building is uh, clamped by green uh, green uh, spaces the balconies are there on the dead walls also we have greens and there are various ways by which we can it can be maintained so maintain is not the issue now as the technology is improving plus uh, we can see you know on top of the buildings now that we don't have space on the ground so on the top of the building terraces if three four buildings get combined so we create a nice bridge where all the amenities for the office buildings or for residential buildings would be created like jogging tracks tennis courts etc so i mean these are the ways by which the uh, today's facades and today's buildings are evolving also with the new technologies and new uh, softwares available like you know we may, somebody mentioned about rhinos grasshopper grasshoppers and all complex form, forms can be visualized like you know spherical forms you know i talked about architects like zahadi and you know uh, frank gary and many other architects they have so many complex form getting generated so that is all because of this new uh, softwares that we have so i think the way to go in future is uh, use the softwares well we we all have to understand and know the softwares and uh, create this kind of complex geometry very easily by the click of a button absolutely so you have these unique facades that keep changing our um, world brilliant 
Thank you. Uh, Rushikesh, I'm going to be asking you the next question based on your presentation as well. Often the front facade has more elaborate or special architectural treatment than the rest of the structure. The facade can be very imposing, it can be decorative or rather simple. What are the varying elements you personally think constitute a good uh, facade in your personal opinion? See, facade is the best tool which is an architect's, his or her impression to give it to the society. Correct. It's the best tool which an architect does to put it across. And then it's an end user kind of thing. Like what an end user of the product is. Like if it is a hospital, then you cannot have a, you know, a very flashy kind of, you know, facade. Then it needs more sober. Then again, you have got an entertainment. Then the facade is different. It all depends upon the end user. And the the, the uh, project nowadays are becoming more, you know, very specific. Like if it is a residential, then again, it needs to be very calm down one. Again, you cannot have glass there in a very, see glass has been put in residential, but the way it has been reacted by people is also, there are what positive and negative. It is not like appreciated by everybody when it comes to glass facades completely. People would like to, you know, come out and see the balcony, see that kind of, you know, stuff that is there. Okay. Right. A few of my thoughts, what I've got is that, see, I would not like to pinpoint any specific one, like, you know, any specific uh, kind of, you know, facade or uh, any specific element. It will be totally dependent upon the, you know, the person who is using it. Mm. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Rigesh. Yeah. Apurva, are you ready for your question? Again. Hi. Is Apurva with us? Yes. Hi. Apurva, what are the sustainable strategies implemented as a part of desi designing uh, facades? Right. What do you look right. at sustainability-wise? Sure. So, uh, like I uh, shared in my presentation earlier, uh, it's important that uh, the building is, the sustainability aspect doesn't uh, get added on to the building when we are going for a rating. Yeah, so it has to be thought through right from the planning stage. So, be it the orientation of building in terms of north-south orientation, be it planning the facade. Now, uh, like we discussed, uh, I, I demonstrated in one of the projects where we had the structure in the facade and had the mesh uh, letting the air flow. And uh, in one of the pr uh, projects, I demonstrated how we have uh, calculated the chaja projection to ensure that uh, there's not too much of glare. Now, uh, all these windows, uh, skylights, glare stories, they're not just aesthetic elements. They're also a part not just aesthetic bit, but they're also getting in light and they're also contributing to a lot of thermal heat gain. Yes. And like Rishikesh ji mentioned, uh, what's happening is uh, even residential buildings are being given full glass facade. And yes. if you go and see, they're they are having top hung windows. Now, who would want to live in a top hung window house? You know, we want to open windows in Bombay. We are not living in New York with that bitter cold. Yeah. So uh, it has to be, and and like we saw that article wherein it's written that even London doesn't want to have glass skyscrapers. So we are trying to imitate the West, wherein the West is already working on sustainability and not wanting to do what we are doing now. So uh, it's very, very important to uh, study the facade from a sustainability point of view, the window wall ratio, the projections, uh, and then come to a facade. And that's when you will use the right appropriate materials sustainability right. meets practicality means meets aesthetic uh, design with a bout of engineering absolutely absolutely we need to see more of that uh, in our city especially uh, mr gala can i have your question for you yes sir you know it's really important for any facade or product to perform uh, well in our indian climatic condition okay now you, since you're a manufacturer, what steps do you take to ensure this before 
you launch a new product or introduce a new product to the market? Uh, thank you, sir. It's a great question. And quality standard. Uh, before also. launching any new design, yes, sir. Before launching any new designs or product, we first look at the design factor. Uh, see, not everything will look good on the building, uh, be it color or texture. So, along with color scheme, if there is any texture or design uh, on the product, uh, on the sheet or product, uh, we make sure the texture or the design are big enough. Because we see the facade of any building from a distance of, you know, at least 15 to 20 feet. So to able to understand the design for, for a layman person, you know, it, it needs to be visible from long distance. You know, we have seen certain uh, designs which, are, which have very uh, small textures. So in that case, if you see from a far distance, you, you don't even see the design. So it's really important. Once we finalize the design and we are happy with it, that it will look good. Uh, we go ahead with a, with a lot of lab testings, mainly to check the following things like, you know, one uh, for the coating of the product, you know, or the uh, paint of the pro uh, the you know, upper finish, that how long will it last in exterior grade? If we talk about ACP, you know, we check the coating of the sheet of the, which is done on the aluminum. And all the weathering tests is what we do. Uh, you know, if the product will sustain, the entire product will sustain and perform properly in all the seasons. And for how many years? Because we look at any product that we launch, we want it to sustain for at least 10 years. And all the mechanical tests to check the overall performance of the product. So yeah, once all the testings are done and uh, we are 100% sure about the product or the design, only then we launch uh, it in the market. So a lot of uh, R&D and a lot of test is what we uh, do because I personally believe it is a huge responsibility on our part because there goes a lot of manpower, money to build any facade of the building. So, you know, I really need to respect that and be serious about it. So, and at the end of the day, everyone around the building expects the product to perform as per the standards. Cool. So, this is what we mainly do and uh, before launching anything. Absolutely. We go through your website in more detail. Let's put my that as well. <laughs> Apurva, I have another question for you. Okay, uh, based on your presentation, you know, a facade can be very imposing, it can be decorative or it can be very simplistic in nature, you know. What is your view on thematic uh, facade design, you know, and uh, these recurring uh, uh, elements on an environmental level, you know, if you can expand on that and what materials are best suited uh, for Indian climate in your experience? So, uh, the, to the first part of your question, uh, the placement of windows, again, I would say uh, for a residential building, it depends on the plan and uh, uh, it's, again, has to be very, very functional. And uh, let's say for an office space, it's going to, uh, the daylighting analysis is going to design, uh, kind of uh, decide what your fenestration is going to be like. You know, at what intervals you're going to have windows, what size, what lintel level, what sill, uh, what sill height. Uh, and all that and in terms of materials uh, I would say uh, it's important to understand the material before using it so uh, a lot of materials like like we just discussed cotton steel when I was showing materials and uh, people have used it uh, without understanding the property of it that it's going to bleed and it's going to uh, kind of uh, impact the floor or whatever so i think any material that we use we have to understand the properties of the material uh, before using it and uh, and use the right material at the uh, right detail with the right detailing i would say so that's where you know ritesh and his team comes into picture wherein you know even the facade consultants help us understand that let's not use this material let's use this material and uh, from in this context of uh, uh, of our country uh, we must, like we're using uh, insulated blocks for Manipal, but very rarely you see them getting used in any other project. So you have to be conscious of what's available and what's going to do good to the project. Um, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. You mentioned Ritesh. Ritesh, so I have a question for you. No? Sure. As an architect, what challenges do you face with complex geometries? And this also feeds off from your uh, uh, presentation earlier where I had briefly interrupted you you know how yes, do you yes. go about designing uh, uh, you know design developing those ideas if you can be you know concise about that 
Yes. So uh, whenever it comes to complex geometries, uh, for us as consultants, it, it's very important to understand the architect's intent and to make it possible. Now, every material that you see has certain constraints. I think uh, Janesh would uh, kind of agree with me that every material has its own sizes, whatever manufacturing facility can allow, what is the transportation limitations? Do we have the right kind of installation strategies in place? And, and after all of that is considered, after all the tolerances are considered, that's when you go back to your geometry. That's when you start resolving those geometry. You break it down. You break it down to the smaller and smaller aspects of it. You need to get uh, the material right. You need to get the tolerances right. You need to get the structural nodes right so they can accommodate their own, uh, 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 for example, thermal conductivity, their own differences. You know, it's a combination of aluminum, glass, gasket, seal, and every material in a system has their own properties and that has to come into play. So, you know, you break down into smaller pieces, you get those smaller fixed parameters right and then you start playing around with the variable parameters. For example, we played with the glass width, something of that sort. So I think it's about breaking down the, breaking down the elements into very smaller pieces and start thinking it backwards. So how do you resolve this uh, design of facade functionally, you know, from the technical and how do you marry it with the aesthetic uh, point of view? If you can just like explain to us briefly. So like Apurva was saying, uh, uh, you know, uh, the aesthetic will come as an intent, but uh, the right choice of material becomes very important. Now, when you talk about functional aspects, like everybody agrees with me here that, you know, sometimes you need to bring that uh, chain. Sometimes you need to bring that uh, uh, additional feature, which is just protruding out. Uh, there's fenestrations going in, out, you know, just to bring that aesthetic value to it. Now, after that, it comes uh, to the basic functionalities of facade. For example, you need that sound barrier. You need, you need that difference between the, the, the daylight outside. What is the heat gain happening inside? At the end, we are all trying to build a sustainable environment towards us. We, we want to build an environment that we can live in. We want to make as less uh, reduction in terms of energy consumption, make it more natural, make it more naturally ventilated. You know, even, even I have the opinion that the practical challenges exactly but, yeah 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 nice thank you thanks uh sort of a quick question you know um uh, what do you think of uh, you know argumenting the facade by using uh, uh, you know evolving tech technologies integration of lighting can you shed some light on that sort of During daytime, the facade or the outer screen of the building is generally protecting us to give the better environment inside. But during night, you know, when the lights are off, like especially I would say in a uh, uh, business dis district areas like BKC or Nariman Point or a, or a fort area, where, which are like CBD areas, like office areas, there, you know, that area, entire area becomes very dull. So I would say, you know, in the night, these uh, facades of the buildings could be used or treated as a screen and to create some sort of a uh, <clears throat> digital, uh, you know, theme can be created with some sort of message to be given or some displays or a show or a movie can be shown outdoors. And, uh, you know, they can be uh, like a good tourist attraction. For the uh, for the city, so these ways we can use the entire facades in the night time to create certain revenue and uh, give life to the these dead, dead areas. That's a good idea. It's a good idea. Also, uh, reflectiveness and uh, bringing the city to li uh, life in the night. You know, yeah. that could be integrated in this. Yeah, but the idea of uh, screens, LED screens on the the building. Yeah. I've got a. Talking about these screens and about lighting to uh, Mr. Gala. Mr. Gala, with so such huge facades and so many uh, square, uh, so many hundreds of square feet of uh, uh, wall spaces, you know, facing the exterior. How do you maintain um, these uh, facades? You know, um, can you just elaborate a bit on that? Uh, yes, sir. Cleaning is an important step. 
I I feel to prolong the shelf life of any product which is used for facade. And if I personally, with my personal experience, if I can speak about ACP and HPL, uh, you know, they might accumulate dust and other deposits over the period of time. Uh, mm-hmm. But these panels can be washed off with fresh water, you know, in case of stubborn dirt or, uh, you know, mild soap solutions and a cotton cloth can be used to wipe it off. Basically, any detergent that is diluted and ha- you know, has a pH level of 8 can be used. Uh, to finish off, you know, just clean water and non-abrasive cotton cloth, such as linen. And this is how you know, it's very convenient for such products uh, to be maintained uh, easily. And, you know, all these new buildings have proper uh, maintenance system, proper cleaning systems, uh, which uh, you all make sure that there is and all the buildings have been maintained. So by using uh, such products, it is easy to maintain them also with, you know, uh, with convenience. Yeah. Nice. A lot of, uh, lot of dust and dirt in our city. <laughs> Definitely. And after monsoon, you see the state of the buildings here. I've got all these pots and stuff. Okay. On them. Yes. Uh, uh, Rishikesh, you know, these tighter uh, energies regulations have prompted a move away from standard glass. Okay. And there's a desire to make these buildings stand out from the crowd or, you know, for that matter, even blend into the surroundings in a whole. You know, this has sparked a lot of demand, I mean, with your clients as well. Uh, The adoption of these new facades is happening across the world, you know, and is paving a way for exchanging ideas. If you could have some of your ideas on this. And I promise this is the last question and we'll wrap up after this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I would call this as a, uh, you know, a functional facade solution. You got it. It's a functional facade solution where the client has become more of conscious about what the parameter of the building is giving. Just like, you know, it cannot be just an envelope. They want to use it. Like, you know, any, uh, there are now a trend is happening in West about solar energy, how you can bring in solar energy to the facade. Then this green, green thing. And then we discuss about the, you know, uh, like in residential, you know, more calmer facades, more calm it has to be. And I definitely agree that, you know, if you try to bring in on the, you know, residential thing, glass, it's a nightmare. You know, the people who are using in Bombay are really suffering. Few of the buildings, what are there, where you've got an openable one. You don't have a sliding also. Uh, That is what will become a very important thing, what the architect does to the society. You got it. It is not just, it has to be very, Energy, energy, and the, and, uh, you know, the technology has to be used now mm. in a very, very, you know, uh, practical way. It cannot be done, and then afterwards, the existing client who is there has to work on that for the mistakes what the architects have done. This yeah. is what is my thought. Very true. I mean, there's a lot of new stuff, you know, with kinetic facades, with curved glass, fiber reinforcement, uh, weathered materials, all that kind of stuff. I think uh, facade, as you said, is is phenomenal. That uh, creates a uh, creates a mark. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you cannot be wrong in that. No, everyone's presentation was absolutely top notch. I really enjoyed this. And uh, sorry if I dragged the questions a little bit uh, long, but I think a whole, uh, it was a great panel. And I want to thank uh, IDAC and um, uh, everybody involved in the uh, in this discussion. And uh, hope we can do this together sometime again. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. It was a great learning experience. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so much, Kunal, for being a very good host. Yes. Yes. Thank you guys. Yes. Agreed. Thank you.